E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos aqui no DCS World F16 Viper. Essa sequência de vídeos que eu estou postando são dos arquivos lá do canal do Matt Agner, aquele CEO que posta os vídeos acadêmicos do F16 Viper. Até o outono de, desse ano de 2019, ele vai lançar vídeos explicando algumas coisas sobre o F16. Como os vídeos deles são públicos, eu vou reeditar eles e colocar aqui no nosso canal com legendas do YouTube. É, vou colocar a legenda do YouTube lá, vou copiar o vídeo e vou postar aqui no canal. Como os vídeos dele, eu já falei, são públicos, não vai ter problema. E como o meu canal não tem monitoração, ou seja, eu não ganho dinheiro para postar vídeo no YouTube, eu acredito que não vai ter problema. <cười> Mesmo assim, lá no na descrição do vídeo eu vou colocar todos os links dos arquivos original do Matt Egner. F16 Viper, acompanha aí. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this DCS F16C Viper video, we're going to be taking a look at how you set up your controls for the Viper. So when we release the product, we include a many default profiles for popular sticks that can best support the Viper. Uh, these included Thrustmaster, Real Simulator, uh, Logitech slash Zytec, uh, Verpal, and VKB. Uh, however, we also realize that many people want to, of course, customize their profiles for their stick and throttle to best suit their needs. So I wanted to put together a little video of how you would go through our controls manager to set up your stick and throttle. So before we take a look at the controls manager, let's first take a look at the stick and throttle of how they're really set up uh, in the real S16. Now on the uh, image displayed on the uh, left side at the very top, we have the uh, weapon release button, the uh, red button, and this is used to release any weapon except the gun. So even for air-to-air -air missiles, you would actually use the weapon release button and not the trigger, like say in the Hornet. And to the right of that is the, uh, the trim switch, which if you are using a uh, standard trim and not the uh, backup panel on the console, you'd be using this for uh, pitch trim and roll trim. And generally with the pitch trim, you never have to touch that. Uh, even the pilots we talk to rarely if ever use it. Uh, the only time you'd really be using the trim hat would be actually for roll, because although the S16 trims to 1G in pitch, you'll still have to uh, trim and roll, particularly for uh, asymmetric loadout. And below the uh, trim hat is the display management switch, the DMS, which most pilots pronounce as the DMS switch. And this has a, a different functions depending on the mode you're in an aircraft. Uh, the most common uses are to switch the uh, sensor of interest or SOI. Uh, but other functions can include uh, enabling or disabling the helmet mounted sight in other systems. And to the uh, left of the DMS switch is the target management switch, uh, the TMS pronounced the TMS switch. And just like the DMS switch, it has uh, many different functions depending on the mode you're in. But uh, some of those common ones are uh, TMS forward for designating a target and TMS aft for undesignating a target. On the front of the stick is a two-stage trigger, and the second stage fires the gun, and the first stage can have different functions. Uh, generally, uh, firing the laser is the most common. And halfway down the stick is the countermeasures management switch, or the CMS switch. And as you might imagine, this controls our countermeasure systems with forward, back, and left and right options. At the bottom of the stick is the expand field of view button, and this controls both the expand mode for air to air radar and also can control the field of view for different sensors like the targeting pod. And lastly, at the, uh, the top right of the stick is the nose wheel steering aerial disconnect and missile step button. And as you might imagine, again, this will uh, enable, disable the nose wheel steering, uh, also the aerial disconnect uh, connection. And also it acts as a missile step in the sense that it can either step through missiles of the same type or with a long press, it'll actually change the air to air missile type itself. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, real throttle functions now in the image displayed and we'll go from top to bottom. So first we have the UHF VHF transmit switch and this allows you to transmit either on COM1 or COM2 which are the UHF and VHF radios but also you can go side to side which will also have IFF functions. 
On the front of the throttle is the manual range and on cage button. And you can rotate this knob to adjust display range, say such as the radar, or you can depress the button to on cage cage a uh, seeker such as the uh, AIM-9. And below that is the uh, dogfight switch and a press aft will put you into a dogfight mode which will automatically bring up an AIM-9 in the gun or you could move it forward to the MRM position, in which case if a longer range missile like an AIM-120 is loaded, it will auto automatically bring up an AIM-120 in a 40 mile range. And next is the uh, speed brake switch with a uh, press aft will open the speed brake and push it forward will close the speed brake. And the antenna elevation knob's primary function, as you might imagine, is to adjust the elevation of the uh, radar scan. And finally, we have the uh, radar cursor with the enable switch, which allows you to slew the cursor on the MFD that is currently SOI. Okay, so here we are in the main menu. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the options uh, gear icon to bring us to the options page. And here we have our uh, systems tab. You can see my uh, option settings here, our controls. And then in gameplay, here at the top, we have game flight mode. And depending on if you have this checked or unchecked, you'll have two different uh, control setup options for the S16. If it's checked, you have a more arcade type of uh, option setup with uh, you know very easy lock and cycling targets with just a key press or simulator mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep it unchecked so we'll be in simulator controls. So if we go to controls now, and we have our aircraft list, we have F-16 Sim and F-16 50 Easy. And if we had that gameplay option set to the uh, easy mode, we'd be using the easy controls. But because we have it unchecked, we'll be using the simulator controls. So we have to select F-16 Sim from the controls manager. And once we do that, let's go take a look at the uh, setups now. First, we'll go to Axis commands. And these are uh, commands that are not single presses on a hat, a keyboard, uh, and so on. Let's go ahead and first cl clear these out so I can do these from scratch for you. Okay, so first let's do the primary ones. Um, of course, we have the different functions listed here on the left side, uh, the category, and then the input device, uh, the three columns here for keyboard. Uh, this is my stick and this is my throttle. So for pitch, we'll have pitch, and we follow it over to the input device, which will be the stick, which is the box here, and now we'll double click on it, and now we'll move the joystick forward and back for pitch, and you'll see that it automatically recognized it as joystick Y. Hit OK, and I'll go to roll. So we'll select roll, we'll follow it over to the stick column, find the box, double click, and now move the stick, right and left, and automatically recognizes as joystick X. Now we can also do is we can go ahead and set up the uh, tuning. So we have the uh, box selected, we'll go to axis tune. And the two I usually use, one is the dead zone and one is the curvature. Now for dead zone, if you have an older stick, uh, maybe not as precise, and it moves a bit around the middle, you wanna have a little dead zone. So what I usually do is you just click on the little button here and then use the left and right arrow keys to adjust it a bit. So I just do a, a dead zone of two. Now, if I wanted to have the response curve be a little less responsive uh, around the middle side, I could do a little curve on that. But for me, uh, the F-16, I like to keep it about a, a response of zero, so a nice linear curve. Come back out, and now we'll do the same thing with the pitch. So go to axis tune, dead zone, just two, and I keep the uh, curve uh, linear. Okay. And we come down to thrust, which is our throttle. We'll go thrust. Now this time we'll go to the column for throttle, find the box, double click, and now move uh, one of the throttles on my Warthog throttle quadrant forward and back, and it recognizes that as joystick Z and OK. And I really don't need to adjust uh, any of the axes tuned for this. Now, if I was using, say, a Cougar throttle, uh, TQS, which is like the real S16, then I would also map the um, uh, antenna elevation knob as well as the manual range knob, but I'm not going to be using those for this one. Uh, next, let's go look at the HOTAS category. So we scroll down on the 
categories, and we have Hotas. And again, let's go ahead and clear these out so I can do these from scratch. Okay, so here at the top, we have our antenna elevation knob, which we looked at earlier in the video. And because I don't have an axis command, I'm going to map these to the uh, coolie hat on my throttle. So go to throttle, uh, counterclockwise, double click, and I'll go uh, coolie down for counterclockwise, and then coolie up for clockwise. Uh, next, we'll do the trigger, and we'll do the second detent first, so we can pull it all the way down. So go to the uh, stick column double click and pull the trigger all the way to the second detent. And now I'll do the first detent, click and just first detent on the stick. And that's all set up. Uh, coming down, now we'll do our CMS switch. So we'll do aft first. So we have aft, we bring it over to the stick, find the box, double click, CMS aft. And now we'll do forward, left, and right. So now our CMS switch is set up. Now we have our DEMA switch. Uh, so first we have DEMAs. So we, on the stick, column, double click, and going down or aft on the DMS switch. And now we'll go left. Now go right, and then DMS forward. Uh, next, we have our uh, dogfight switch. And uh, because it's a three-way switch, we actually have a special uh, setting, actually marked special, uh, for the uh, Warthog uh, throttle quadrant. So we'll have the dogfight center uh, special, and we'll take it over to the throttle. And then we'll move the uh, rocker switch aft and then for the MRM mode, a rocker switch forward. And we don't have to worry about all these others. These are just a lot of different options uh, to uh, allow different sticks to be uh, mapped correctly. Now we have our uh, cursor. And we'll go back to throttle, double click, and press in on the cursor switch, expand override. That's going to be a stick function midway down the stick. Double click, click on the expand button on the stick. Manual range. Now, again, this is one of those that if you have the um, uh, controller, you can map to an axis, but in this case, I don't. So I'm going to uh, map it to the China hat on my throttle. So throttle, China hat forward or counterclockwise and China hat aft for clockwise. And again, you may find a, a different configuration that works best for you. This is personally works best for me. Uh, now we have the uh, nose wheel steering. That's a stick function. So stick column, find the box and press the nose wheel steering missile step button. And scroll down, uh, paddle switch, stick, pretty much as it sounds. We'll go ahead and hit the paddle. Uh, the cursor, actually, we're going to go back to the axes. Let's do that. I forgot to do that earlier. So axes commands. Now, if you have an axis uh, to map the uh, cursor to, this is the best, definitely the best way to do it. So we have a radar cursor, X axes and Y axes. So we'll go X axes first. We'll go to throttle, double click, and now we'll move the uh, uh, cursor switch right and left. And now the y-axis up and down. And now those are mapped. Let's come back to HOTAS and pick up where we left off. So we don't need to map, map these because I already mapped those to an axis commands. Uh, speed brake. So uh, throttle function, find the box, double click. And this is every track. So we're going to go uh, forward on the switch, speed brake switch. And then for uh, extend, find it over here on the throttle column and then go aft on the speed brake switch. 
and that's set. Now we got the uh, TMS, so stick function. So we'll go to the stick, follow it over, uh, TMS down. So aft on the TMS switch on the stick, and now left, right, and forward. Uh, throttle cutoff, I'm not going to worry about. Uh, now we'll do the trim. Uh, of course, it's the stick function. So left wing down. So go left on the trim switch. Nose down. So uh, push uh, up or forward on the trim switch. Nose up. Uh, push aft on the trim switch. And then right wing down. Go right on the trim switch. Uh, IFF switch now. And I use that as the uh, the top hat on the stick, on the throttle, I should say. And we'll go uh, to the right, oh, the throttle, so on the right, and IFF out, so I go left, UHF, I go up on the hat, and VHF, I go down on the hat. Uh, uncase switch is the uh, manual range button. And uh, I actually map that to the uh, same hat as I do for the uh, radio. So again, it's also a throttle, of course. And I'm going to use as the uh, depress function on that hat, which is button two. And then finally, we have the weapon release button, the big red button on the uh, top of the stick. Find the box and press the big red button and OK. And this way, I've already you know, set up here uh, my uh, stick and throttle for the Viper and a little overview of how you can do it yourself. And again, this is just how I personally do it. And you may find a way that better suits you. Anyhow, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that it'll help you set up your HOTAS just the way you like it. Thanks.